Hello, welcome to this lesson of the AC Analysis Tutor. Finally, we're going to use the concepts that we have been developing over the last several sections. Here we're going to culminate in one of the most important ideas in all of circuit analysis. Now, I mentioned it a little bit before, previous lessons, this is called the phaser or the phaser techniques of circuit analysis. You know, everything was much easier back when we did DC analysis because nothing changed. You know, we have constant sources, constant components, and so all the currents and the voltages were always constant. But now everything's changing, and they're changing with a sinusoidal shape. And we've already seen with even very basic, basic circuits, they can lead to differential equations that are difficult to solve. So what we're going to do is solve all of that stuff uh, by introducing the phaser technique or the phaser representation of, of a source. And so don't forget the big picture of what we're trying to do. We're trying to find a mathematical tool um, that can basically take these cosines that are everywhere and represent them in a way that's going to make the math easier. We already know if we do it in the time domain, we're going to get differential equations. It turns out if you do them in the frequency domain, the trade-off is you have to use complex numbers, but the math is actually really easy to do, especially now that we all have calculators that can multiply and divide complex numbers. Now I have to give you some mathematical background here. I could just throw it at you and say, here's a phase or use it. But I want to sh sort of at least try to tell you where it's coming from so that you can have a, a rich understanding of where it's actually coming from. But I will say up front that most everything we're going to learn in here, it's great background material, but you're not going to probably be tested on what's in this lesson. I'm giving you a little bit of theory. Um, but the application of what we're doing is going to be something you use in every single circuit. The other thing I'll say is I'm going to do my best to make everything extremely clear. But when we get to the end, if you feel like you're a little fuzzy on the, on the theory behind what a phaser does, just keep in mind that when I show you how to use them, it's so simple I can almost teach my sixth grader how to do it. Okay, maybe not quite that simple, but definitely um, if you've done any calculus, if you've done any physics, this is actually much easier than that to use. Uh, but the theory can get a little bit thick sometimes. So what we're going to do is illustrate it by re requiring you or asking you to recall uh, the thing we used before, Euler's identity. Remember I told you uh, that we would uh, revisit that and we would use that uh, and so we're going to do it, uh, use it here. It's actually central to the whole idea of phasers. And by the way, before I get into phasers, I want to just point one thing out. Uh, remember we said that when we have a sinusoidal source, we have amplitude, frequency in there, and omega, and phase. Those are the three things that are needed to define a source. Amplitude, frequency, phase. But we've already said that frequency is going to be the same throughout the circuit. Once you're driving it at a known frequency, all the other frequencies are known. It's, it's the same as the source. So we said in the conclusion of the last section that really amplitude and phase is very important. Keep that in mind because that's what a phaser is really going to do. It's going to carry that amplitude and phase information uh, around for us and we get rid of the cosine and we just kind of know that it's going to be a cosine shape at the end. All right, so here's Euler's identity. It says e to the j uh, theta is equal to cosine theta plus j times the sine of theta. Now, we all look at this and we know it's magnificent, uh, obviously, but you, you shouldn't look at this and, and, and really understand where it comes from. This is an identity that has been proven and is very detailed and very important, not trivial thing to prove. This is not something you should look at and say, oh, yeah, I get that. This is something that you should realize very, very smart people before us have taken many, many, many hours to prove that this is true for us. So what it's saying is a complex exponential, e raised to the power of the complex number 